Annie Graham, a miniature artist, and her husband, Steve, a psychiatrist, have two children, Peter, 16, and Charlie, 13. They all reside in their little house together. The funeral for Annie's emotionally distant mother, Ellen, is attended by the entire family. Annie is stunned by how many people are there. Annie goes to a grief support group and opens up about how her relationship with her mother was strained up until the birth of her brother, Charlie, after which Ellen had a more prominent role in Annie's upbringing. Steve, however, does not tell Annie that he received a phone call informing him that Ellen's cemetery had been desecrated by unknown attackers. Any urge is that Charlie accompany Peter to a party has been invited to by Peter. The siblings see a telephone pole with an occult insignia etched into it on the way to the celebration. Charlie, who has a severe nut allergy, consumes chocolate cake that was sliced with a knife that had been used to chop walnuts and goes into anaphylactic shock when Peter abandons her at the party. Charlie leans out the window as Peter drives her to the hospital, but is severed in two when the car swerves to avoid a dead deer. Annie finds Charlie's severed head in the backseat of Peter's car the next morning and is horrified. Peter drives home in shock. Annie becomes good friends with Joan, a fellow member of the support group. Annie is taught by Joan how to conduct a seance in order to communicate with Charlie. Annie successfully persuades her family to try a seance later that night. Peter is terrified as Annie imitates Charlie's voice and begins to move and destroy objects before Steve can throw water on her. Annie thinks Charlie's ghost has turned evil and vindictive because of Peter's increasing troubles with the supernatural. She burns Charlie's sketchbook after seeing drawings in it depicting him threatening Peter. Unfortunately, her clothes catch fire along with the book and only stop when she removes it from the flames. While sorting through her mother's possessions, Annie discovers a photo book in which Ellen is shown as the coven leader Queenly, with Joan as one of her followers. King Payman, a demon who wants to possess a human male, is the subject of another book. The one who calls upon Payman will be richly rewarded. Annie discovers Ellen's body and mysterious symbols in the attic. The demon king appears to Peter outside of school and Joan tries to force his spirit out of his body. While in class, Peter suddenly bangs his head against the desk as if under the control of an outside entity. When Annie can't bring herself to kill herself, she tells Steve about her connection to the book and begs him to destroy it. She throws the book into the fireplace after he refuses, and Steve spontaneously combusts. Annie shows initial shock but then her face blanks out as Payman takes control of her. Peter wakes up late at night to discover Annie hanging to the ceiling while members of the coven gather nude all around and inside the house. Peter, hiding in the attic, sees Annie cut off her own head with piano wire and decides to commit himself by jumping out of the attic window. A sphere of light enters his body and restores life. He pursues the headless body of Annie as it floats into Charlie's treehouse where he finds Joan and the rest of the coven genuflecting before an idol fashioned from Charlie's severed head, along with the headsless bodies of Ellen and Annie. Joan dresses Peter in a crown and lays it atop his head. Peter is hailed as King Payman by the coven after she announces that they have successfully replaced Charlie with a suitable male host. Easily one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. In Hereditary. The generational repercussions of a family curse are subtly examined, both in terms of the film's physical invocation of a demonic entity and in terms of dramatic emotional manipulation between family members. There is a lot to be gained from watching the picture more than once, picking up on subtleties and details missed when trying to figure out what the hell this film is about. Even though it seems to have no real plot or purpose, I encourage audiences to look deeper into the film's themes. It doesn't rely on jump scares or other horror cliches, opting instead for a long, grinding build-up to what we eventually realize is the Graham family's doomed fate. Throughout, there are hints to the main character's futile attempts to influence events beyond their control, events of which they remain blissfully unaware until the very end. This outside, and yet, somehow, within force has governed their lives from the start, denying them any opportunity for happiness.
This movie is deeply tragic. Beyond the excellent scary photography and superb acting lies a family drama that will certainly ring true for many people who grew up in dysfunctional or abusive households. Astor is well known for exploring disturbing subject matter in his writing, and this film is no exception. Several tense moments succeed magnificently thanks to Astor's penchant for exploring dark territory. Any horror movie enthusiast should watch Hereditary, which is a perfect example of effective psychological terror. Almost as good as a masterpiece, 